Hey guys, what's up? So this is a breakdown of the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer that came out a little under 12 hours ago. I spent a lot of time looking at it frame by frame, except for Easter eggs and everything. And here we go. We are going to break this thing down. Oh, look at this. This is a good one. Some suggest that Parker's powers include the male spider's ability to hypnotize females. Stop. Come on. <laughs> yes, my spider lord. <laughs> Can we just like stay up here all day? It is so crazy down there. Now, our very first shot is Peter and MJ on top of this building that looks to be just outside of Manhattan. You can actually see the skyline in the back. Just behind them on one of the walls, you can actually see the word Ditko. Now, Ditko is actually for Steve Ditko, who is the creator of both Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. We see the headline on the newspaper that MJ is reading, which says Spider Minions. And this gives reference to the drone attack in London in the fight between here and Mysterio on the Bridge. We also see Pray for New York on the back page of the paper she is reading with a baseball player and that probably is the New York Mets. Peter's legs are crossed in what looks like a number 4 which would of course signify phase 4 of the MCU and also an A which probably would be the Avengers symbol. I mean it kind of looks similar to me. The book that Peter rests his head on is colored magenta and violet which look very similar to his traditional red and blue of his costume. That's right folks. Spider-Man is in fact Peter Parker. Listen, I did not kill Mysterio. The drones did. The drones that are yours. We then get a shot of MJ and Peter swinging through New York. This actually mirrors one of the ending shots from Far From Home where Peter and MJ were swinging through New York and stopped at the point where it was revealed that Peter is actually Spider-Man. And over here, you can actually see MJ covering part of Peter's face so as to cover his identity in a certain way even though he has a mask on. Also, when they are swinging, you can actually see J. Jonah Jameson in the back as well as public enemy number one. Of course, we all know that J. Jonah Jameson has a vendetta against Spider-Man for probably no reason. It's, it's one of the weirdest feuds I've ever seen. We then get this dark lit shot of the NYPD. That's the New York Police Department. And if you look closely at the man behind the man in the jacket, you actually notice his facial features look very similar to Charlie Cox. Now, Charlie Cox did play Daredevil in the Marvel series on Netflix, which was so beloved by so many people. And in a case like this, Peter would definitely need some legal representation and who else do a better job than Matt Murdock. Now, looking at the jacket of the man who is interrogating Peter, we see the letters DODC. That stands for Department of Damage Control. Now, we did see the Department of Damage Control in Spider-Man Homecoming at the very beginning, where they were cleaning up Avengers Tower in the aftermath of the 2012 move. Does any part of you feel relieved about all this? What do you mean? Now that everybody knows, you don't really have to hide or lie to people. For the record, I never wanted to lie to you. But how do you tell someone that you're Spider-Man? Now we cut to this conversation between Peter and MJ and look at the sketches on the wall of MJ's bedroom. And we do remember that MJ's sketches. MJ actually was sketching in Far From Home and she actually made one sketch in the detention room where she was not supposed to be. <laughs> it's you. And that happens to be the third sketch on the wall. We then see Peter, MJ and Ned in what looks to be a court hearing and we do see a crowd surrounding them. And then you see a devil in disguise poster. Now this actually alludes to the 2007 comic book run Spider-Man One Day More. And in that comic book series, Aunt May was dying due to a gunshot. And Mephisto, the Marvel demon entity, approached Peter Parker with a deal to heal Aunt May to save her life at the expense of Peter Parker's marriage to Mary Jane. Watson. Now we then get this scene of Peter and MJ on a bridge surrounded by helicopters and when you look at one of the helicopters you can actually see WYPE New York News Channel 1. Now these are news helicopters now probably there might be some police ones as well. Now this is also a very interesting callback to Spider-Man movies of the past. Now if you remember Spider-Man 1, Mary Jane was trapped on the bridge. I think the same thing happened in Spider-Man 2. She was suspended in Spider-Man 3. It happened in Amazing Spider-Man. Also this seems to happen around the same time as Peter is revealed to be Spider-Man when you look at MJ's costume and how he hasn't changed at all. Now everybody knows. But this isn't about me. This is hurting a lot of people. I've just been thinking about how to fix all of this. 
We then see Peter in the halls of Midtown High, his high school, and when you look at the TV in the right corner, you can actually see Betty Brandt, who is reporting the news probably on Peter Parker as Spider-Man. Now, Betty Brandt does work for the Daily Bugle in the comics, so this is sort of linking them closely to that destiny of her eventually working for the Daily Bugle in the future. Now, in the very next scene, we see Peter and Aunt May in their apartment watching J. Jonah Jameson on TV, probably giving more details about Spider-Man. We also see some siren lights in the background in the, through the windows. Now notice the demeanor of Peter and Aunt May. Aunt May looks a little apprehensive, Peter looks fairly relaxed but equally confused and that may allude to whoever this is. I'm suspecting it could be Happy Hogan but I'm not too sure. We then get shots of Aunt May and Ned being interrogated probably about Peter. In the very next scene you see Peter sitting behind a table in what looks like a kitchen and you see a picture of the Brooklyn Bridge behind Peter and the framing is such that it looks like the Brooklyn Bridge is burning. This probably is to represent the chaos that Peter does go through in the course of the movie. We then see Peter glancing at these Doctor Strange Halloween decorations and in the back you can see chocolate milkshake. Now this is an interesting callback for me to Avengers Endgame where Doctor Strange and Wong were actually talking about... Oh my god. <laughs> My lights just went off. <laughs> this actually gives me a call back to Avengers Endgame where Doctor Strange and Wong were talking about ice cream flavor. Ben? A bit chalky. A hug of Hulk burning fudge is our favorite. That's a thing. So, Peter, to what do I owe the pleasure? I'm sorry to bother you, sir. Please, we saved half the universe together. I think we're beyond you calling me, sir. Okay, Steven. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. When Mysterio revealed my identity, my entire life got screwed up. I was wondering if maybe you could make it so that he never did. Strange. Don't cast that spell. It's too dangerous. Fine. I won't. We then see Peter approaching the New York Sanctum Santorum, which is Doctor Strange's abode. Now when you look outside of the Sanctum, you can actually see the trees are yellowing and the leaves are falling off, which indicates that they are in fall season, which is when Halloween would be. The doors of the Sanctum open and for the first time we see Doctor Strange in a slightly different variation of his clothing, but still with a cloak of levitation. Now when you look on the left side of the banister of the staircase, you can actually notice that the Cauldron of the Cosmos is missing. If you remember from Avengers Endgame, the Cauldron of the Cosmos was what Tony Stark was messing with before Doctor Strange spanked him. Did you seriously just say hitherto undreamt of? You seriously leaning on the cauldron of the cosmos? No, no. Peter calls Doctor Strange Steven, which is very interesting because no one ever calls Doctor Strange by his first name. And in their first interaction in Avengers Infinity War, there was a similar interaction where it was a little bit of a different story. I'm Peter, by the way. Doctor Strange. Oh, you're using your made up names. Um, I'm Spider Man then. We then see the gold and black suit, which has been heavily speculated about in the build-up to this movie. We then see Peter and MJ at the entrance of the New York subway on West 33rd Street, surrounded by so many people. I think this also happens just around the same time as the bridge scene from earlier in the trailer. Now, when you look through the portal that Wong has cast to go to, that looks very similar to Kathmandu, which is where Doctor Strange learned sorcery. We also see Doctor Strange levitating the same manner that he did in Avengers Infinity War when he was looking through the realities. The entire world is about to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Wait, everyone? Can't some people still know? That's not how the spell works. So MJ's gonna forget about everything we've ever been through? Stop tampering with the spell. Oh my god, Ned. He's my best friend. Oh, my Aunt May should really know. Stop talking! Peter and Strange then descend into what seems to be the basement of the Sanctum. Strange casts the spell which Peter starts panicking about last minute in typical Peter Parker fashion which causes a lot of problems and eventually the spell is tampered with as a result of Peter's talking. Now looking at the spell that Doctor Strange casts, we see him draw what looks to be a circle and this reminds me of the sacred timeline we saw in Loki. And in Loki, the representation of the timeline took this form where it went in a circle, signifying that time wasn't linear but was occurring in a cyclical form and was happening at the same time all the time. That's a very weird thing to say, but I just said what I said. We then see two other of the same shapes below this original shape that Doctor Strange cast, and I have a bit of a theory about that, but I'll get to that at the end of the video. We tampered with the stability of space time. Multiverse is a concept about which we know frighteningly little. The problem is you trying to live two different lives. 
longer you do it, the more dangerous it becomes. Now we do see what looks to be the mirror dimension. We actually did see this with the ancient one in the very first Doctor Strange movie. We then get this shot of a whirlwind with a lightning bolt striking. This is confirmation that Jamie Foxx is reprising his role from the Amazing Spider-Man here as Electro. And when you look closely at this scene, you can see two production trucks. The first one on the left being for the New York News 1 and then the other for DailyBugle.net. You can also see three police cars as well in that very same scene. We then see Doctor Strange and Spider-Man on a train in a canyon. Now this looks very similar to the canyon that we saw in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We then see Doctor Strange tell Peter that as long as he tries to keep this secret identity, bad things will continue to happen and this implies to me that Peter asking Doctor Strange to cast that spell probably might have been the Nexus event that causes this multiversal break. If you don't understand what the Nexus event is practically, you need to go and catch up on Loki really quickly. We then get this scene where Peter is holding what looks to be a box with the insignia of the Sanctum Santorum and we see what Doctor Strange does to Peter over here is very similar to what the Ancient One did to the Hulk in Avengers Endgame. We see the Iron Spider suit make a return as well and then we see the shot of a recon operation. Probably that looks like Peter's apartment, I'm not quite sure but we then see Happy Hogan in that very same scene. Looking surprised, I wonder what may have happened. That's probably one of the most interesting shots in the trailer we see someone attack peter and looking very closely this looks very much like lizard of course lizard is from the amazing spider-man so i think we are starting to get a few more connections to the other movies <laughs> Hello, Peter. And then the most shocking part of this trailer, the green goblin bomb with the cackle, that is Willem Dafoe. And I believe and I'm hoping he does reprise his role as Green Goblin in this movie. We see this occurs on George Washington Bridge, which is in Fort Lee, New Jersey. And then we see him, Alfred Molina, for the first time in 17 years, picking back up the mantle of Dr. Octopus to reprise his role in the MCU. The Hello Peter here means one of two things for me. It means that number one, it could be that this Dr. Octopus is from a reality where the Spider-Man in that same reality has the face of the Spider-Man that we know as, as Tom Holland's face. Or number two, and this is the one that I'm really hoping does happen, Tobey Maguire returning as the OG Spider-Man. Boy, would that make me cry. Now, that being said, I can talk about the earlier spell I was talking about with Doctor Strange. Now, I think what this represents is the two other realities that these villains come from. We see Electro and Lizard that come from the Amazing Spider-Man timeline. And then we see the second circle. Of course, that's where Green Goblin and Doctor Octopus come from. Now, this is a little interesting because these villains are actually dead. So, I wonder what's going on here but um i guess there'll be a very plausible explanation i do think this would explain a lot of why we see spider-man posters and spider-man objects in the mobius trailers and why we actually saw michael keaton's vulture and also why there is a sam Raimi daily bugle logo in the venom series as well so it's a lot to unpack but i guess we'll get more answers as we go along this has been a very chaotic breakdown for me honestly and thank you if you stuck with me to the end post your comments down below let me know what you are most excited for about this movie and and i will see you in another video very soon take care i have been your favorite dark man and i'm out peace